A startup with no operating revenue sees its stock rocket more than 500% in a year. Its core product? Not an app. A nuclear microreactor designed to sit next to AI data centers since they are devouring electricity at an exponential rate, pushing grids to their breaking point and run for up to a decade without refueling. And at the edge of the story is a name you know, Sam Altman, the AI mogul who's been betting that the future needs two things in unlimited supply, intelligence and energy. This is Oklo, a pioneer in advanced nuclear technology, a company trying to turn nuclear from slow, centralized, and bureaucratic into modular, distributed, and fast. Today, we're diving into their audacious plan to power the future of computing and why they are one of the most talked about companies in the energy sector. Welcome back to the Capital Navigator, the channel where we explore the strategies and business models of the world's most influential companies. Nuclear energy is back in the spotlight, driven by AI's insatiable appetite for power. Data centers running ChatGPT and other AI models need constant, clean electricity. And nuclear power is one of the few sources that can deliver 24-7 without emissions. Today, we'll trace Oklo's path from an MIT-founded idea to a newly public company chasing one of the hardest problems in infrastructure. We'll unpack the technology behind its Aurora powerhouse microreactors, the business model, and the regulatory gauntlet that has already stopped them once. We'll dig into the sector's tailwinds, AI's energy hunger, U.S. policy support, the competitive landscape, the cash needs, and why the stock acts like a bubble narrative even as the company remains pre-revenue. Stick around to the end. We'll map the near-term milestones that will make or break the thesis over the next 12 to 24 months. Let's begin. The origin story, from MIT dreams to Sam Altman's boardroom. Let's rewind to 2013. Two MIT engineers, Jacob DeWitt and Caroline Cochran, founded Oklo with a bold vision to revolutionize nuclear energy using advanced microreactors that are inherently safe, cost-effective, and fast to deploy, and also that can operate for years without refueling, minimizing waste, and maximizing efficiency. The name Oklo comes from something incredible, a natural nuclear reactor in Gabon, Africa, that spontaneously generated power billions of years ago. It's a poetic inspiration for a company trying to make nuclear energy accessible, safe, and scalable. Their flagship product? The Aurora Powerhouse, a line of compact, fast fission reactors cooled by liquid metal, very likely sodium, designed to operate at atmospheric pressure with passive safety and long refueling intervals. These aren't your grandfather's nuclear plants. They're small, modular, designed to be built in factories and shipped to customers. Think of them as the Tesla power wall of nuclear energy. But here's where it gets interesting. In 2015, Sam Altman, yes, that's Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, joined Oklo's board. At the time, he was running Y Combinator, Silicon Valley's most influential startup accelerator. His involvement wasn't just symbolic. He invested in the company in 2019, giving Oklo credibility and opening doors to tech investors. Why would the guy behind ChatGPT care about nuclear reactors? Simple, he saw the future. AI's growth would create a massive energy crisis and an energy bottleneck. As Altman famously said, the two most important inputs for a great future are abundant intelligence and abundant energy. By backing Oklo, he's positioning himself at the intersection of two megatrends, artificial intelligence and clean energy. Fast forward to 2024, Altman co-founded a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company called Alt-C Acquisition Corp with financier Michael Klein. Its sole purpose, to take Oklo public. The merger closed in May 2024, valuing Oklo at $850 million and raising about $306 million in gross proceeds and trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker OKLO. And here's the crazy part. Altman stepped down as board chairman in April 2025 to avoid conflicts of interest with OpenAI, but he remains a major shareholder. His fingerprints are all over this company. The Sector Reboot – Why Nuclear is Back in the Conversation For years, advanced nuclear power was a promise in search of a market. AI changed that. Data centers are on track to consume a far larger slice of electricity. U.S. load could climb from approximately 5% today toward approximately 12% by 2030, with global data center use reaching approximately 945 terawatt hours annually. Operators don't just need more power, they need firm, 24-7, low-carbon power, often behind the meter to guarantee uptime. Solar and wind are essential, but intermittent. Battery storage at this scale remains costly. Scaling them up is prohibitively expensive. Enter advanced nuclear with SMRs and microreactors that can be deployed closer to the load. 
Policy winds are shifting too. In the US, there's bipartisan recognition of nuclear's strategic role. Incentives arrive in the form of production tax credits and licensing fee relief. Legislative pushes like the Advance Act aim to trim timelines, and executive actions frame certain data centers as critical infrastructure, linking national capacity to energy resilience. Add it up, and you have a political and economic runway for companies that can ship reactors safely and quickly. The technology, fast reactors and nuclear recycling. So what makes Oklo's technology different from traditional nuclear plants? Traditional reactors use slow, thermal neutrons, neutrons that water slows down so they hit the fuel at just the right speed to trigger fission, and water for cooling. They're massive, expensive, and can only extract about 5% of the energy from nuclear fuel before it needs to be replaced. Oklo's main product is the Aurora Powerhouse, a micro-reactor that uses fast neutrons and liquid metal cooling, likely sodium. Sodium allows operation at atmospheric pressure, cutting the risks associated with high-pressure water systems. Also, this architecture is based on passive safety systems, meaning it relies on natural physical principles, like gravity and convection, rather than active, operator-driven systems to prevent overheating. If the reactor experiences a problem, it shuts itself down safely without human intervention or external power, making it safer and less prone to human error. This layout allows them to operate at atmospheric pressure, reduce explosion risks, run for up to 10 years without refueling, and use recycled nuclear waste as fuel. That last point is huge. The US has thousands of tons of spent nuclear fuel sitting in storage. Oklo's reactors can theoretically burn that waste, unlocking energy reserves equivalent to five times Saudi Arabia's oil reserves. The concept leans on proven government programs. It's based on designs like the Experimental Breeder Reactor 2, EBR2, which ran successfully for 30 years. Oklo's innovation is making this technology modular, scalable, and commercially viable. For investors, that legacy is meant to de-risk what would otherwise look like a brand new science project. The Aurora Powerhouse is designed to be modular, coming in sizes from 15 megawatts to 75 megawatts, manufactured in a factory and shipped to the site. This speeds up construction and deployment, making it ideal for decentralized applications like remote data centers, military bases, or isolated communities. And here's their ace in the hole. Oklo is the only advanced nuclear company that's already secured Hollyu fuel, high assay, low enriched uranium, from the US Department of Energy for their first plant. Hollyu is the fuel these new reactors need, and it's in short supply. This gives Oklo a head start over competitors. The business model, selling power, not reactors. Most nuclear companies sell reactor designs to utilities. Oklo is doing something radically different. It's selling power as a service. They're adopting a build-own-operate model. Instead of selling reactors, they build the plants themselves, own them, and sell electricity directly to customers through long-term power purchase agreements. Think of it like solar companies that install panels on your roof and sell you the electricity. Oklo wants to do the same thing with nuclear reactors. For customers, that removes licensing and operating headache. For Oklo, it creates recurring revenue and pricing visibility. But there's a massive catch. It's capital intensive. Oklo has to fund the construction, licensing, and operation of every plant. Analysts estimate they'll need between $2.7 and $4.2 billion in additional capital just to deploy their first few reactors. The practical financing path is likely equity, which means dilution unless paired with project finance, strategic partnerships, or government programs. It's a needle to thread. Raise enough to move fast without crushing existing shareholders. Oklo is also integrating the fuel side. The company plans a recycling facility in Tennessee at commercial scale, eventually a fuel foundry to make fresh Haleu, verticalization designed to stabilize supply and costs for its own fleet. This plant would process nuclear waste into usable fuel, creating a closed-loop system. The company is also diversifying. In February 2025, they acquired Atomic Alchemy, a company that produces medical radioisotopes, materials used in cancer diagnostics and treatment. This could generate revenue as early as 2026, before their first reactor even comes online. Their target market? AI data centers. According to Oklo, 80% of their customer inquiries come from data center operators. These facilities need constant carbon-free power, and they're willing to pay a premium for reliability. Nuclear fits perfectly. The regulatory nightmare. Now for the hard part, getting regulators to say yes. In March 2020, Oklo submitted the first-ever combined operating license application for an advanced reactor to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. This was a big deal, historic even. But in January 2022, the NRC denied the application. The reason? 
significant information gaps. Specifically, Oclo hadn't provided enough detail on potential accident scenarios and safety system classifications. This wasn't a no forever, but it forced a rewrite. It was a brutal setback. The NRC has decades of experience with traditional water-cooled reactors, but Oclo's liquid metal-cooled fast reactor is fundamentally different. There's no regulatory playbook for it. Oclo regrouped and adopted a new strategy. Instead of submitting a complete application at once, they're breaking it into phases. In September 2025, the NRC agreed to review Oclo's principal design criteria report on an accelerated schedule, a critical step forward. Even with advanced act timelines that aim for approximately 18 months, the real pace depends on how quickly the regulator gains comfort with novel designs. Fuel fabrication and recycling facilities are separate licensing fronts, each with their own uncertainties. The regulatory approval is Oklo's biggest risk. The NRC has never approved a commercial fast reactor cooled by liquid metal. There's no guarantee they will this time. Oklo's timeline is ambitious. First reactor operational by late 2027 or early 2028. But as one analyst put it, that timeline assumes everything goes perfectly. In nuclear, nothing goes perfectly. And with all these regulatory hurdles, the company is still in a pre-revenue stage. But that hasn't stopped its stock from soaring in the market. And that's exactly what we're going to look at next. The financials, burning cash with no revenue in sight. Let's talk numbers. Oclo is a pre-revenue company. They haven't sold a single kilowatt hour of electricity. Their only income comes from interest on cash and investments. Thanks to the SPAC merger, they ended 2024 with about $275 million in cash, which the company expects is enough to fund operations into 2028. That sounds like a lot, but it won't be enough. Building even one reactor could cost hundreds of millions. Scaling to multiple plants? We're talking billions. Operating cash outflows stepped from negative 0.95 million in 2023 to negative 38.4 million in 2025 as headcount and professional services rose. That number is projected to hit $90 million by 2026 as they ramp up for construction. Oclo will need to raise more capital, likely through issuing new shares. This creates a massive dilution risk for current investors. If the company has to sell equity at unfavorable terms, existing shareholders could see their stakes significantly watered down. The financials are stark, no revenue, mounting expenses, and a business model that requires enormous upfront investment before generating a single dollar of profit. However, the stock's behavior in the market has been quite interesting, to say the least. After the SPAC merger in May 2024, shares started trading around $8. This isn't your typical road to going public. A SPAC, short for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, is basically an empty shell company created with a single goal, to raise money in the stock market and then use that cash to acquire or merge with a private company. It has no operations, no products, just capital and a mission. It offers private firms a faster and often cheaper way to go public, skipping the lengthy and costly steps of a traditional IPO. By September 2025, they had skyrocketed past $110, a gain of over 500%. At one point, the stock flirted with $130 to $140, pushing the company's market cap above $20 billion. Let me repeat that. A company with zero revenue and years away from commercialization was valued at over $20 billion. Many analysts called this level stratospheric for a pre-revenue. What drove this rally? Hype. Specifically, the AI energy narrative, Sam Altman's involvement, and a wave of retail investor enthusiasm. But in late September 2025, reality set in. Insiders started selling. Michael Klein, a board member, sold $6.7 million in shares. CFO Craig Bielmeer sold $9.4 million, and CEO Jacob DeWitt gifted $3 million in stock. These sales spooked the market. Analysts from Goldman Sachs and Bank of America issued cautious reports, calling the valuation unrealistic and questioning whether projected revenues of under $300 million by 2031 could justify a $20 billion market cap. The stock dropped over 10% in a single day. Bulls argue Oklo is a once-in-a-generation infrastructure play. Data centers need firm, clean, co-located power. Micro-reactors are uniquely fit for AI clusters. The tech taps a century of fuel via recycling. The policy environment is finally supportive, and Altman's long association validates the vision and keeps Oklo connected to the AI ecosystem that needs it most. Bears call it a speculative bubble driven by narrative, not fundamentals. Licensing remains unproven. The NRC has already denied it once. The business model demands billions in capital, implying dilution. 
and the AI load story, while real, may not translate into customers willing to be first on a novel nuclear design under tight uptime guarantees. The downside isn't theoretical. If timelines slip or financing tightens, the stock can re-rate fast. Let's not forget, Oaklo doesn't operate in a vacuum without competition. Other companies in the micro-reactor space are also racing to deliver the energy that AI demands. NuScale, the regulatory leader, first and, so far, only SMR with an NRC standard design approval. Benefits from a mature supply chain and a familiar technology base, credible with utilities. TerraPower, backed by Bill Gates and the DOE, plus notable strategic interest including NVIDIA. The NRC has accelerated its review timeline. Westinghouse with its micro-reactor Evinci, the legacy nuclear heavyweight with a micro-entry. Brand, licensing muscle, and global footprint give it credibility. Marketing emphasizes simplicity and rapid deployment. Oclo's advantage? They're focused on the smallest niche. Micro-reactors under 75 megawatts, perfect for distributed applications like data centers. But they're also the furthest from having a licensed operating reactor. The Roadmap to First Power So what's next for Oklo? Short term, from 2025 to 2028, turn atomic alchemy into real revenue with a radioisotope demonstration pathway, starting 2026. Submit phase one of its combined operating license application to NRC by end of 2025 for the Aurora Powerhouse at the Idaho National Laboratory, and then begin construction of the first reactor. They aim for commercial operation by late 2027 or early 2028. Medium term, from 2028 to 2030s, shift from prove it to repeat it. They expect to deploy multiple Aurora reactors using a streamlined subsequent license process. Build fuel fabrication to manufacture Hollyu at scale and recycling facilities in Tennessee. Scale production to meet demand from AI data centers. But here's the reality. Every single milestone depends on regulatory approval, raising billions in capital and flawless execution. One major delay, one funding shortfall, one regulatory rejection, and the entire timeline collapses. Oaklo is a fascinating case study in ambition, innovation, and risk. They're trying to do something genuinely transformative. Make nuclear energy modular, scalable, and accessible. Licensing a novel reactor, finance a fleet under a build-own-operate model, and stand up a closed fuel cycle with recycling and future fuel fabrication. If they succeed, they could power the AI revolution and unlock a new era of clean energy. But they're also a pre-revenue company with massive capital needs, regulatory uncertainty, and a stock price that's already priced in a decade of perfect execution. If it misses timelines, stumbles in licensing, or can't raise non-dilutive capital, the stock's rise will look like a narrative heat bubble over a very long build. Is Oklo the future of energy? Or a speculative bubble waiting to burst? The answer won't be clear for years. What do you think? Is nuclear energy the answer to AI's energy problem, or are there better solutions? Drop your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear your take. If this deep dive helped you make sense of Oklo's bet, tap like and subscribe. Your subscription genuinely helps the channel grow and enables more documentary-style breakdowns like this every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.